Knusper, knusper, knäuschen, wer knuspert an meinem Häuschen? <lacht> Greetings, Mac Warriors, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is TTB. Welcome back to some Mac Warrior online news. And why the hell did I start with the German version of Hansel and Gretel starring the evil witch? Well, because she's got a cauldron, and today is the first cauldron patch. Get it? Ha! Perfect. All right, guys, let's talk about the patch that is hitting. Today, 1.4.241.0, the April 2020 patch. We're going to get the Striker pack. We're going to get weapons changes, equipment changes, quirk changes, and more. Before we talk about this, guys, we have already talked about the potential equipment changes, weapon changes, all the stuff that's going to come in this patch in a prior video. So I'm not going to repeat that because that was a 40-minute video and I don't want to say the same things again. So let's talk about the new things that are in here and just do that very, very briefly. So the patch is sitting today uh, at about, what is that, 7, 8 p.m. German time. So uh, as you're watching this video, it should be hitting at the same point. You can just try logging in and uh, you will have access to your, for example, Striker Mech Pack if you bought that. So we have the introduction of the Striker Booster Pack, the content, uh, which is uh, the two special variants of the Dragon and the Thunderbolt with their unique patterns, cockpit items and bolt-ons. Then there will be the huge list of weapons and equipment changes. That's the largest single rebalance pass to weapons and equipment that PGI has ever implemented. So that's going to be exciting. And uh, we'll have a lot of new toys to play with. Oh, well, let's say old toys, but newly rebalanced by the community. The same thing goes for some equipment, including mask and, of course, uh, crooks as well. And then lastly, we'll see some spawn point changes, for example, for Tomalin. So uh, we will be very interested to see if we still keep on spawning on that uh, left side spawn that's doomed to get sniped by the enemy team instantly. But uh, according to PGI, the new MWO level designer, Francois, uh, has been hard at work updating his first map, including modifying terrain, adding and removing assets and changing spawn locations. I'm thinking that's going to be Canyon Network and uh, I'm definitely excited for that. And uh, there will also be new player packs coming to both Steam and on the website. Uh, let's keep an eye out for these. They will feature four Inner Sphere Hero Max, one from each weight class, and will be loaded what is the extra value, including MC, GSP, and C bills at a deep discount. So once I see that, once you guys tell me whether that is, or whether I see it first or you guys see it first, let me know, and then we'll talk about it. Now, first things first, the Striker Booster Pack is here. If you watch this video if you watch other videos of me using the striker pack and the max in there and you decide hey i want to i want to get the pre order bonus for the striker pack you can still get that up until may 18th so uh risk free for you guys uh just watch the videos see if you like the max see if you think that that is worth your investment uh we already talked about the uh striker pack full disclosure i'm getting the striker pack for free from pgi but um i will still give you guys some honest opinion on both max as always and you guys can make the decision but as we said in the preview, I think it's a fair bit of value for the money. Now, the Thunderbolt. We finally know the quirks, both for the Thunderbolt and for uh, the Grand Dragon. So let's go down to the Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt will have... And these should be these should both be the same, right? Yeah, these should both be the same. So we will see a 30%, of course, Seabill bonus for the uh, special variant of that Thunderbolt. We will have 5% uh, heat PPC generation, 15% missile cooldown, 5% heat, and 10% velocity. So since this thing only has one missile hard point up on the top, it's a classic Thunderbolt, right? So uh, this is probably best suited for an MRM-30 or MRM-40. You benefit from the 15% cooldown plus 5% heat and 10% velocity. So that's really, really nice. And then you could pair that with some lasers and you should be good. We'll have ECM and we will have jump jets and we will have masks. So this is going to be a very interesting toy to use. Um, crooks seem okay for the most part. Um, the be the uh, missile slot right here gets the heaviest crook, but that is okay. PPC heat generation. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see where the hard points are, but uh, maybe good, maybe bad. We'll see. Um, it's not a very powerful crook, so we'll see about that. For the Grand Dragon, remember what I said about the Grand Dragon, guys? You don't see many dragons in MWO. And the reason why you don't see many dragons is because they're not the best mechs out there. Uh, there's a, a UX2 build that was used in competitive play, with, which was very interesting. But other than that, yeah, you don't see many of them because they're big, they're clunky, they're easy to hit on the side throw. So it's lots and lots of issues. But I said if, it, if they give this mech some really, really good quirks, it might actually be worth it. So let's see what kind of quirks they got. Well, we get 15% missile cooldown. 
bear in mind guys these are the missile hard points in the center torso so you get two missile hard points for two slots in the center torso and these will have 15 percent missile cooldown so uh i don't know maybe srm4 or something like that it's, it, it, we'll see we'll we'll see it gets 10 percent general cooldown 10 percent general heat reduction and 20 percent velocity so uh cooldown heat velocity these are all crooks that benefit ppcs and it's got some nice armor and structure bonuses to make it quite tanky. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, I still don't know whether that's going to be amazing or, or good or whether it's going to be bad. We will just have to test it out. It will, it ju it will just be a dragon. Um, given the geometry of the mech, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be having all the issues that dragons normally have. It's a wide-ass mech. But it has interesting quirks. Um, whether they're good enough or not, we'll see. We'll find out. We will find out. For now, um, at least I'm seeing some solid quirks, um, some substantial quirks, and not just like little things like 5% here and 5% there. No, it's 15, 10, 10, 20. Okay. Okay. That's going in the right direction. And of course, guys, bear in mind that there will be a rebalance of mechs, a rescale of mechs, and also like when, once the mechs get rescaled, also their quirks will get rebalanced as well. Some rebalances are happening this patch already. Okay, let's keep on scrolling. Let's keep on scrolling. Um, several steps have been envisioned throughout the year, increasing the variety of weapons, making more weapons viable, incentivizing more diverse mechs. That is part of why I make YouTube videos, guys, because I want to give you guys more ideas on how to play mechs, not just the cookie cutter builds that you can find on every website. Um, be creative and have fun with your own creativity. Back Warrior Online Battletech is about building big stompy robots and then using them. It's not about just copying somebody else's build and then never ever playing anything else again. So that's a good thing. Um, they will also increase the baseline agility across the board. So that is going to be nice. We'll be able to follow your twist and turn a little bit faster again. Geometric rescale of 35 ton plus chassis um, and then also new makes and skill tree revisions. Um, there's also been talks about shortening or condensing down the skill tree as well so all good stuff in here um the changes in this patch important are based on the values and stats of weapons prior to the march patch so these weapon changes are the ones being made to quote unquote mwo vanilla from last year or this year whatever we will forget about the march patch the march patch gets 100 reverted so uh pgi listened uh, as we have already discussed now here's the big overview i will leave you this link for you guys so you can read through that we've already covered all of that uh notable points would be the heat penalty for yeah micro lasers on the clan side is removed um medium pulse lasers and pulse lasers in general get a heat uh, a range upgrade um especially for the clanners um large pulse clan is getting improved to be more competitive to clan ppc um, Inner Sphere will have some changes, uh, for example, the minimum heat penalty level is increased from 4 to 5, so you can fire 4 Inner Sphere large lasers now without a heat penalty, so heat scale limit plus 1 here, very, very nice, and a couple of other changes um, also, including, uh, as I already said, large pulses on the clan side, uh, max race increased significantly, uh, laser duration down a little bit, heat down a little bit, damage up a little bit. Inner Sphere Light PPC, important for you guys to uh, understand, minimum range removed for Inner Sphere Light PPC. So this thing not only will be an interesting weapon to use now, it's going to be super helpful in dealing with stealth mechs. So if you have a mech that runs, for example, streaks, running a light PPC might actually be really good now. Um, there's also a change for Snapnose PPCs. Uh, Snapnose PPCs will have a heat scale limit of 3, so we'll be able to fire 3 Snapnoses at the same time without any uh, heat penalty. Uh, heavy PPC will have a heat decrease and the velocity increase, all, all the other good stuff here. And also important, ER PPC on the Inner Sphere side, uh, the heat penalty multiplier is decreased, so uh, you don't have this insane ghost heat spike coming in. Um, there's also changes to ballistics, first and foremost to like AC5s and LB5s. Um, they are also reducing the amount of burst shells for clan and inner sphere, um, ultra auto cannons. And um, yeah, there's, there's some good stuff in here. I'll let you guys read through that. Again, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, rack cockpit shake will be decreased. Rack 5s will be improved a little bit to be more competitive against Rack 2s. Light Gauss has completely been killed by the last patch. Uh, this patch will not only revert, but also um, make Light Gauss more interesting. For example, getting it a max range of 2,200 meters, improving the uh, velocity um, and improving the damage. So this is going to be a very interesting weapon. And also it doesn't have any heat penalty. 
So you can shoot this with uh, PPCs, as far as I understand that, which is great. Okay, moving on, moving on. Heavy Gauss rifle on the inner sphere side gets a weapon health increase. I like that a lot because that means hopefully my Fafnir side torso don't blow up uh, as quickly as uh, it does right now. And light machine guns, uh, machine guns and heavy machine guns have seen some buffs as well. Uh, buffs mostly on the light and heavy side because they were a little bit underused. Missile weapons sees some changes as well, specifically in the um, cooldown for streaks for the clans. Um, missile health increases across the board to make missiles more effective against AMS. ATMs have been nerfed in maximum damage and improved in minimum damage. Uh, missile health has been improved a little bit. So a long story short, um, AMS will not be murdering ATMs as much as it used to, um, but it's still gonna be very, very useful. Also, NARC duration has been decreased by about uh, around 28%. So that is really, really nice because NARC felt like it lasted forever. Now it is decreased to 22 seconds. But uh, NARC range, for example, for Inosphere has been increased to 600 meters. So if you can hit that, that is going to be very, very nice. Ammo explosion will not happen anymore for AMS ammo, so I can happily stuff my AMS ammo in my Corsair again. And the ammo patron has been increased to 3000, up from 2200. Um, laser AMS also has its heat decreased by a lot, from 2.85 down to 1 heat per second, so that is a huge, huge buff for laser AMS, and might actually make laser AMS, um, we'll see, but it might make it competitive to normal AMS with uh, ammo. Mask changes. The mask uh, destruction from last patch has been removed. Instead, we're going to get an increase in red line threshold to 85%, and the fill rate um, will be decreased um, as well. Um, also, mask should give us uh, turning speed again, but I'll, we'll test that. On the inner sphere side, very important, guys, and that will lead to a lot of updated builds. Case is now weightless. So we can put case in components where we have space, and those will, cases will then prevent um, ammo explosions if this part is destroyed or ammo is destroyed in that uh, mech part to, uh, from traveling to other adjacent body parts. Okay, consumables, very important. Artillery strikes and airstrikes are changed. The damage per shell slash per bombs are going down. For the artillery strike, the, um, the zone is basically staying the same. Uh, the damage per shell is gone down from 15 to 5, so we shouldn't see uh, light mech 1 hits anymore from artillery strikes. But the bombardment time has been doubled, so it's going to be 6 seconds of funny explosions now, and uh, it's going to be 20 shells instead of 10. So uh, all in all, these are great changes. Hopefully they will lead to artillery strikes being more of like an, an area denial weapon and less of an, hey, let's uh, really, really destroy people at that spot. So you have a chance now to walk out of the area. Um, airstrike, same thing, less damage per bomb, but one extra bomb in total, seven up from six. For the miscellaneous quirk changes, that's what we discussed, uh, the awesome 8Q has uh, removed, it has uh, reduced its PPC heat gen, uh, there was a 10% buff on there, now it's just 5% they did there because of the changes that they did to PPCs in this patch. Blackjack 3, same thing, the 5% PPC health quirk is going to be removed. And the quick draw IV4, remember guys, I always said the quick draw IV4 is one of the best mechs in the game, is having its armor quirks reduced by 25%. Mind you, the armor quirks are reduced by one quarter, not the armor itself. So uh, the armor bonus on the quick draw IV4 was insane, and then just lowering that down a little bit, it's gonna be like, I don't know, four or five armor less per uh, quirked body part. So it's not an insane nerf, it is something just to bring the IV4 a little bit in line because the quirks themselves are insane. Okay. And as we already said, Tormund in the Desert map spawn point changes have been improved. So uh, we'll play the map and we will see how it is going. And uh, we'll be trying this stuff out starting on the Wednesday live stream. So I hope I'll see you there. And that is basically it, guys. That is basically it. Exciting times to uh, be an MWO player because finally, finally, I hope you guys were able to read this. I always forget that this screen is zoomed differently than the screen I'm reading from. Um, finally, after what feels like four years, at least at least three years it feels like, we're getting a substantial balance change to the game, powered by the community. I can only tell you guys one thing, go ahead, play the heck out of the game, and then make sure you vocalize 
to the rest of the community and to the to the cauldron group to pgi what you enjoy and what you feel you don't enjoy as much and why and uh, these guys will keep at it to make the game better exciting times to be a fan of big stompy robots so give yourselves and me of course <laughs> <laughs> a nice thumbs up for the video and hey guys if you want to support me in making my content then check out my patreon page or of course check out the various options available on twitch this has been ttb i'll see you on the battlefield take care